After two games and countless expansions, you might think that there's not much left to The Sims. But with The Sims 3, EA proves that the venerable series still has some tricks up its sleeve. There's a whole lot of content from the earlier games that's missing in action, but chances are, you won't miss it. Like the earlier games, The Sims 3 is an expansive package designed to let you, the player, tell whatever story you wish with your little Sims. While the focus of the game hasn't changed much since the original, EA has clearly taken a good hard look at where the series has gone off course, and has taken some pretty bold steps to address those shortcomings. The biggest change is how you interact with places outside of your little personal plot of land. The town in The Sims 3 is now one big integrated area, and you're able to travel to any location at any time. No more tedious loading screens. No more disruptions in the flow of time. You can follow a sim to work, over to his buddy's house for a visit, or you can make a day of strolling around downtown, doing a little shopping, or perhaps taking in a movie. Or if it's your thing, you can even choose to hang around the cemetery at night. There are well over a dozen unique locations, not counting homes and places of employment. To encourage players to get out and do more than just lounge around their houses all day, time appears to move a little bit slower in The Sims 3. This gives you a chance to explore more places without fear of wasting the entire day. The Sims themselves have gotten quite the makeover as well. Character creation is still largely the same as before, but now you can opt to give your Sim several personality traits that help define what he'll be like and how he'll behave in the world. There are over 60 traits to choose from, and while it's pretty easy to understand what the athletic, friendly, and slob traits will do, others like absent-minded, childish, and insane are far more difficult to figure out. But by mixing and matching different traits, you can create unique personalities for your Sims that actually have profound effects on how their lives play out. Traits also steer you towards certain careers. If you're an evil genius, for instance, perhaps a career in science would be a good fit. They also can lead you to one of many lifetime goals, such as creating a hybrid plant monster or becoming the Emperor of Evil. Lifetime goals are a sort of endgame for The Sims, and achieving these can give you access to extra abilities or items. Of course, since the game is essentially open-ended, you can safely ignore all of this and do whatever you want. The added complexity of traits has been balanced out by streamlining of the wants and needs mechanic from earlier games. You still need to eat, sleep, and pee, but needs related to comfort or the desire to inhabit a pleasing environment are gone. In their place are moodlets, which are temporary mood boosts that affect your sims whenever they perform specific actions, like relax in a soft chair or eat a comforting food like pizza. This takes the chore out of keeping your sims content, and gives you more time to mess around with other aspects of the game. Issues players had with buildings and other objects in earlier Sims games have also been addressed. Arranging furniture and items is a lot easier now that you have the ability to freely rotate objects. There's also a meaty customization feature that lets you change the color and material properties of every single item in the game. A hot pink stainless steel couch? Go for it! The ability to share your Sims stories with the game's community has been augmented with a full-on movie creation tool. Like in The Sims 2, you can record video clips of your Sims in action, but now you can upload these clips to the EA website and use a simple web-based video editing tool to cut together many movies. The Sims 3 may fall a little short on content when compared to the last game, but the design decisions streamline the process and improve it in many ways. By relieving the tedium associated with taking care of all your Sims needs, the game is free to focus on giving players plenty of opportunities to come up with their own in-game goals. If you're coming from The Sims 2, you might initially be disappointed by the lack of things to do. After all, The Sims 2 had college life, changing seasons, businesses, and more. And while The Sims 3 has cherry-picked key features from each of these expansions, you won't be able to experience every last thing you could do in The Sims 2. But in this case, the tighter focus is a good thing. Instead of the mishmashed sprawl of The Sims 2, with the near-infinite combinations of extra content, you have a game that's built from the ground up to support expansions, without breaking its smooth flow. And The Sims 3 does indeed feel leisurely. We can't stress enough how much of a game-changer having one unified town is. It puts the emphasis on your Sims, rather than tying your experience to any one location or building. Before, it used to feel like a chore to visit a downtown area. Now, it's a snap. The other big game-changer is the trait system. These take the place of the personality points you used to have to assign. The problem is, it was never very apparent what the points did. That's definitely not the case with traits. Interactions with people and objects are directly tied to your Sims traits. Pick Computer Whiz, and the number of things you can do with electronics explodes. Pick Evil, and nearly everything you do, from conversing with your neighbors to napping on the couch, takes on a tinge of malevolence. 
If you choose to be clumsy, don't be surprised if you trip up at the most inopportune moment. Why would you want to pick negative traits for your Sims? Because it adds a layer of depth to your character. It helps define who they are in the world, and it helps you tell the story you want to tell. Hardcore players hell-bent on winning the game are missing the point. The Sims is really just a great big game about storytelling. It's a sandbox of what-ifs, and The Sims 3 puts more power in the hands of the player than ever before, without making its mechanics feel like a burden. No surprises here. The Sims 3 contains the amount of spit and polish you would expect from the series. Visuals have been upgraded from The Sims 2, although not greatly so. The game still retains the clean, almost cartoony look, and the music and audio is also appropriately simmish. Oh, <laughs> At least the interface has received an overhaul, item selection from the shopping interface is a lot more logical, and the added customization tools put a lot of creative power into your hands. After suffering from an oversaturation of Sims for the last 10 or so years, it's hard to believe The Sims 3 is as good as it is. It's unapologetically a Sims game, but it also manages to feel truly fresh. If you've never ever liked The Sims, you still probably won't get what all the fuss is about, but if you were burned out on all The Sims 2 expansion content, we urge you to give The Sims 3 a look. The changes may appear subtle, but they do make it play in fundamentally different and undoubtedly better ways.